Hi, this is a video for the last two parts for the project and those two jaws they look similar the only difference is uh, for jaw B we have a rivet hole uh, you know, for a, a countersink for, and the other one is a smooth hole all right let's go next page all right so the the whole thing is a combination of extrude subtract and some drafts and by drafting I mean um, the draft that is actually make a straight extrude some face to make some face that tilt out okay as you can see in the slides so those are the basic steps that will give you some idea of the how this thing goes and uh, so we have a blank file here and we're gonna start the, the first sketch okay, this one will be on XY plane and uh, again, I'll start with the uh, center circle. So this one's 0.47 inch. And for this sketch, I would recommend uh, to start from the bottom portion because it has a lot more dimension than the top. Then it'll be easier to get it fully constrained before you move on um, to the other parts. So let's have the arc here, which I don't really know the dimensions. Then we go down from the side vertically. That's a little step. Then go outside, there's a circle. Um, so we can use uh, the arc tool in profile. So that'll give us a tangent. And it looks like it doesn't want to do that. We'll try to get a tangent again. Okay. So we'll just leave it there. Apparently that's too big. Okay, we'll do arc. Arc and arc tangent this way. Then a vertical line, no, not vertical. A straight line then there's a circle or some sort of uh, arc we'll do arc okay let's make a tangent here and we can drag this a little bit then lastly we have a little section of curve a straight line coming up okay so you notice we have the um, collinear constraint for this vertical line to y-axis as well as the uh, the center point also it's on the y-axis so first we're gonna do the collinear for this line to y-axis then second we can make the point center point of the arc to stay on y-axis so those are the two constraints we can use uh, right away then we will make this arc this vertical line tangent okay so now we can start putting in dimensions and uh, let's see we have for those vertical dimensions or maybe horizontal dimension first so let's start from the bottom uh, from y-axis to the right side we have 0.625 Okay, now you see this thing shift, uh, shifted. So what we do is we can make it the arc smaller or the circle smaller, two six two five. That'll bring us back, or you can just drag things around. Then the position of the circle here is actually a half of p one. So you can either type in that number, or we'll do p one divided by two. Okay, that's centered here, and uh, we have the step right here is 0 0.08. Then I think that's all for the horizontal distance. Then we'll do the vertical ones. So try to get that right most from the bottom, to, from the center of the circle to x axis. It's one point.
five two one five. Okay. So again, that thing jumped. Then we can drag this up a little bit. If not, we can dimension this distance to x distance. That'll be one point two five. Now you jump back. Okay, 1.25 and this 1.521. One uh, okay, it's not bad. Then somehow you added a line there. Which, oh, okay. Then we can drag this point. Oh, I just delete this one. I don't want that. I want this line coming down and be tangent here. Then we can trim this off. Okay. Just in case everything flies away. And the next is P14 is the uh, center of this arc to the origin 0.9 inch. Okay. Then the last, the shortest one is from this point to x axis 0.25 and as you can see this bottom is somewhat constrained but this line is not so this line is 120 degrees no not this one uh, I guess this um, radius p16 or the that's a diameter so if it's radius then it'll be 0.23 as you can see, the bottom is constrained. Okay. Then we can move on from here. That looks like a fillet or a arc either way. So I'll try to make this now a straight line up, which is uh, 120 degrees to the vertical then we can probably put it here 120 okay then do we have any dimension here uh, no we don't have any dimension here but uh, you can see the arc right here is from the origin so we can set up an arc be tangent to this line and also the center point is on the origin if you can't drag that thing we can use coincident constraint to the origin okay then we have a radius which is 0.38 okay so it looks like that's all constrained uh, then we can go up so we'll move this up a little bit then the top we have the top line it might be a better idea to have a line there that tells us how high the top is which is uh, 1.45 to the x-axis so that'll select x-axis to this is 1.45 enter and you can turn that to reference or you can just leave it there and I will have lines coming up and they're connected to that. Okay. So on the left side we have one arc that looks like this, tangent. Then another arc actually connects to the top then be tangent. Okay. So this side is also tangent between these two arcs. Okay. Something like this. And uh, we can try to put dimensions there from the origin or x-axis to this point 1.0408 okay, then we have a radius here is 0 0.2710 okay. then if you notice um, the top is actually has a length so what we do is we can trim this off and we can drag this point to about here 
then we have a distance from this point to y axis 0 0.0 to uh, 625. So 0, 0.625, then the length of the top line is 0 0.5137. And now you can see uh, the left side is constrained. Then apparently this arc here, the first arc is too big. And we can move it down a little bit, and this is on the positive x direction. So we'll make it stay here. And uh, let's see if we can just finish this geometry using profile tool. Coming down a little bit, then here is actually tangent arc and another tangent arc. All right, then we can use dimensions. Um, so P10.25, and what about P32 from this point to y axis? So that'll be 0.2 inch. So that'll constrain this line here. Then the uh, the arc seems like only P30. So P30 is from this point to y axis 0.35. <coughs> and then we do have a uh, intersection point from this arc to the y axis, which it's not here yet. So we can make a line there for reference line. Then we will trim this line off so we'll have this intersection point and make this to reference. Then we can dimension this. We'll dimension this point. Be careful not to snap to the center of the arc. So I will want to pick the end point to the top. This is point 0.9 inch. Okay. I'll shape it a little bit. Then. Uh, I think this will be P25 from this intersection point to the origin. Then you want a uh, parallel distance, something like this, not not horizontal or vertical. You want this? That'll be 0.48. Okay. So it's still not fully constrained. Let's see what happened. Okay. Now we should have one distance from this point to the top. Oh, let's see what happens. Actually, if you look uh, carefully, there's a little short line there. That means the center point and this point is aligned. So if you look at the sketch down here, there's a reference line. So what we're going to do is we connect this center point to this point, make it a vertical, and also make it a reference. And let's say fully constrained. So that's how I get this uh, demand, uh, this sketch. It's a little bit complicated because uh, this shape is really hard to measure from the, the real hardware. So let's finish sketch, then proceed to the extrude, uh, which is given here. We'll do the extrude for the whole sketch. Okay, I did use infer curve. You can use region boundary curve. Then the height is 335.335. We just need to extrude one direction because so we need to do something later. And uh, next page is let's see. The draft. So, if you look at the slides, this face is actually uh, comes out a little bit at the bottom. So, what do we do is we have a command called draft. Okay. So, draft that'll um, make this angle. So, first we want to select uh, the vector. Vector is z direction. Okay. You can either click here. Then the stationary reference, okay, stationary face is the top face. Then the face to draft 
we all select this uh, four faces and uh, I think um, you will need to use single face let's try tangent face see that also drafted the top so I don't need that I just want I want to exclude that face so I will use single face to select this and it's pretty slow this let's turn to this shape okay so those two faces and this one and this one now you can see what happens here so that'll generate this kind of curve here so that's the draft and it'll be 12 degrees and I will do apply because we have to do the other one it's draft 4 Okay, so we'll rotate to this direction now this time it's only one face and uh, let's see the uh, vector still the axis stationary this time is the bottom face so I have to pick this bottom then the face to draft is this face okay so it'll actually make a uh, transition from this face and it makes this face uh, all the connected face uh, to transit a little bit and uh, the angle is six degrees here as you can see the difference okay. <coughs> all right now next step is a chamfer also this is not a default setting you have to pick uh, asymmetric the two distance will be 0 0.05 then the other one is 0 0.2 and you have to hit enter to make it um, to show in preview then the the curve to pick we just want two curves we don't want tangent curve because pretty much the whole thing is tangent so single curve this one and this one we just need those two okay make sure distance one and two are the one you want okay the top will be smaller the vertical distance is 0.2 the next page is another sketch um, this one should make a cut to generate the the step on near the tip okay so now its top is uh, flat so we'll make another sketch just on XY plane so uh, here we'll hide the extrude and we probably need to project some curve from first the sketch so as you can see from this picture uh, we projected the top line from the uh, first sketch so we'll do a project curve single curve project the top okay, then we can hide the first sketch turn this to reference now we will make a uh, rectangle so the dimension here is 0.45 from the top 0.45 then what else the width and the height width is 2 height I guess that's 3 and uh, this one is important P82 is 1 inch should be from Y axis to this side so that'll be 1 and this is fully constrained. It will show the extrude here. Then we can do the extrude. So this distance would be a little bit tricky. The distance is from, okay, start from 0.265, and the end value will be 0.8. So it's actually not touching your sketch. It's the extrude is away from the sketch and then we'll make a subtract alright now let's go for the next step is another sketch we'll make a cut another subtract the form another step here so again a new sketch okay then we need to project 
a, an arc from sketch 1. So let's hide the extrude. Hide the second extrude to show the first one. We'll do a project curve, project this curve. So as you can see, the first sketch is really important because everything afterwards is going to be based on that. We'll hide the first sketch, leave this one only. Then we do a offset. Okay, the offset distance is 0.1 inch. Now I'll pick this one. You can double click the arrow to flip the direction. All right, then that's the offset. Then as to the other dimensions, we'll do profile. As long as this one is bigger than your extrude. And here we do have something. Okay, make it tangent. And make this vertical. Well, you don't have to. Um, show the first sketch again. And as you can see, it's a little bit out of ratio. Or be something should be like this. And there's a distance here. I guess I missed that circle in the first sketch. So maybe I just put a point there. Nah, can't snap to that. All right, so we'll project that arc into the sketch. That'll give us the center point. Then we'll dimension this P89.48. Okay. So we have this. Uh, Constraint. We just need this profile here, which intersects with the, uh, the solid. So that's 60 degrees. And as you can see, this line is constrained. The last one is a fillet. It's 0.15. <coughs> and uh, click on the intersection point. And the bottom really doesn't matter. If you want to, you can add more constraints. And then we'll finish sketch. Now this time, um, I'll show the extrude. Then should, uh, use extrude and uh, use region boundary curve. Select the area. Actually, we'll hide this that sketch. Maybe hide this as well. So extrude this. Uh, let's see if we have any um, distance. So we have a distance here. Is. 0.37 divided by 2 and the top again is 0.8 it's actually just higher than the, the solid so that's the cut to apply that will give you this then we'll go back to sketch 1 to add the, um, the circle which we missed so find that uh, it's 0.2 inch so there's a circle here which is 0.2 inch and after you do this you can click this button to take a look at the uh, solid the finished sketch okay so that is um, so far the steps now we get go down we will have some chamfers now we have uh, three chamfers uh, in order and, uh, Asymmetric for the first two, so the first one is 0 0.05 and 0 0.1 for the tops of this edge, and it doesn't like it because I didn't really uh, make click on the the enter key. All right, so that's the first one. The second one is 0.1 and uh, distance 2.02 .02. and then that'll be this edge okay let's see where it goes okay so it looks like that only stops here then the last one is symmetric um, 0 0.05 for the hole Okay, so it's easier to put the rivets in. And then the next step is another. No, not another. We're gonna flip this, or we're gonna mirror this into the other side. So we do have mirror feature, but 
mirror feature only mirrors the uh, the features. So this one has a lot of features. You know, all this uh, twelve steps. Uh, there's something here. Oh, it doesn't matter. And uh, so mirror feature, you really have to choose all of them except the sketches, maybe. Um, so we have another thing called instance geometry. You can just uh, mirror a uh, solid that's already been made. So this one, and the option would be mirror. You can also do a copy, you know, from one point to another point. And uh, again, the uh, symmetry plane is x y plane. You can actually see it. And then, uh, so that is the uh, instance geometry. Then now it's two separate solid bodies, so we need to reunite them uh, because we need to do the edge blend here. So the next page is two edge blends. Okay, the first one is 0.9 inch. The other one is let's see. Okay, weird number. So first one here, um, I guess that's yeah tangent. Tangent curves all the way around 0.9 inch. Apply, then we'll do edge blend for this side. I think it's point 1.85. Hit enter. Pick this edge. I'll hide the sketch so don't, I don't click on the sketch. Pick this edge. So those two edges, point 1.85. Sometimes if you got an error, that means your first sketch is not right. Um, you can work. Uh, the workaround is uh, you can make it smaller. Okay, that's that's probably gonna do it. I think uh, this 1.85 is from uh, just for the aesthetic purpose. Then the next sketch we're gonna cut a space for another jaw to uh, coming to this side. So that'll be the position. So we want to make a sketch on XY plane. Okay. Then we really don't need any other reference. We'll hide the solid, hide this sketch. Um, use profile tool. Let's draw something like this. And I guess we have two perpendiculars. So make it perpendicular on this corner. Then we have angles for these two lines. Uh, this will be uh, where is that? This uh, twenty degrees. Then this top is thirty-five degrees, and the distance from the top to the origin is point five eight, and from origin to the bottom line is. 0.52 and uh, I added this distance so it can be fully constrained okay yeah, I think if you make it longer it let's say 5 so maybe there's something else okay you see this dash line all the way to make it um, this point on x-axis so that looks like a point on curve. This will make it fully constrained. And uh, otherwise, it really doesn't matter if it's fully constrained or not, because you can't really change the profile that's intersect with the uh, solid. So making it stay on x axis, that will make sure this uh, extrude will stay there and if we change anything the sketch will not fly. so next we'll make the extrude mm -hmm. and uh, the extrude we will use uh, the region boundary curve and uh, the distance doesn't matter as long as it's a negative z direction okay so we're gonna flip the direction Okay. Then also subtract from the solid that'll make this opening, and the next step will be um, a draft, and uh, this will make the opening a little bit wider. So 
the draft, uh, we will use the negative z direction as the vector this time. Right? And then the stationary face. Okay. Also, you can pick z from uh, negative z from the. Alright, so stationary face is that face, and those two side face is the face to draft. The angle is 12. Okay, the next will be some uh, edge blends. Okay, it's actually two step edge blends. Then the first one is um, the short edge on the side. Okay, this uh, first one is 0 0.04 inch. And uh, the next uh, edge blends are going to be the four sides of this opening. So, because it's on tangent curve, so the last one, it will actually only pick half of the edge. So you want to click on the top as well. And there's the top half of the edge. Okay, the same radius. Then this will be done for the jaw A, which has a smooth through hole and uh, as you can see, it's a little bit rugged. And the jaw B is actually um, just has a countersink hole. So you want to save this, then save this part as jaw B or another name that you can remember. Okay, so there will be the countersink. Okay, let's save this as jaw A. Then you can save this to jaw B. Then we have two different files. Then we can insert a cylinder. You don't have to make a sketch. Okay, so make a cylinder. And uh, it starts a little bit above the uh, origin. Okay, also the vector is positive z direction. And uh, it'll be away from the origin um, 0.1675. Okay, positive z. Then the Diameter is 0.54 inch, height is 1 inch, and the height doesn't matter as long as this is uh, uh, higher than the the solid. Then we'll subtract from jaw A, okay, on oh, that solid. Okay, then you do the, uh, and okay, that's the countersink. Okay, so later on you can see in the assembly that's how it looks like. The top one is jaw B and the bottom one is jaw A, which uh, are connected by a rivet. Okay, so that's the rivet. That's why we need the countersink. Okay, thank you.